Welcome back to EPM Org, Evangelist Pilgrim Missions. Today we are going to continue our multi-week Bible study titled Exploring God's Word, which will take us from the beginning of the Old Testament clear to the end of the New Testament. EPM Org also offers a weekly one-on-one -on -one Exploring God's Word Bible study, as well as we also offer this very same in a group setting which can be scheduled by contacting me through this very page. Exploring God's Word, Lesson 13 The Plan of Redemption is what this lesson is called. We are still in the book of Exodus, which is only the second chapter, second book of the Bible. Exodus is right after the book of Genesis, so it goes Genesis and then Exodus. Genesis is the beginning, and Exodus is the exit. In the book of Exodus, we are in chapter 3, so we're only three chapters in. Verse 1 through 4 is where we're going to start today. And Moses was raised in the glitted courts of ancient Egypt. He was groomed to be the next pharaoh, educated as a mathematician, an engineer, a doctor, and a lawyer. But now he is on the backside of nowhere. Forty years following a herd of sheep. How many people want to know how God is working in their life? God always does something to prepare you privately before he can use you publicly Egypt had forgotten about Moses but God never did even though Moses was on what seemed to be the backside of nowhere God always was already there in the wilderness with a plan for his future God always knows who you are. Are you who you are and where you are? He is not a God of the background. He is a God that will lead you. He is constantly going before you and making a way for you. When the Lord saw Moses turned aside to see a bush he called him to a great work moses had sensitive sensitivity to spirit spiritual things the bush caught his attention and he took the time to turn to see it personally managers are taught to look into the eyes of an interview to see if there is a hunger in their eyes for the job Moses was hungry for the things of God and God is waiting for his people to stop and look for him in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 5 it was just an ordinary day until Moses sensed the presence of God Something divine took place. The ground he was standing on became holy ground. In Moses' culture, the act of taking your shoes off is a symbol of great respect. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 6 through 9, God said, My eyes have been seen everything that has been happening to my people my ears have heard every prayer they have prayed I have come down to deliver them God doesn't just watch and listen from a distance in his time and in his way he is a God that gets involved in Exodus chapter 3 10 through 15 God says to Moses 
you are going to go to Egypt for me. Moses says, no, I won't. Resistance is written all over this verse. Have you ever resisted God? I know for my personal self, when I was a young teen in the Methodist Church, I got really involved. I heard God. I went through confirmation, a year-long class on Wednesday nights. had a great mentor named Mr. Hannah. I lit, I wore the, I wore the robe and carried the candlestick and lit the candles on Sunday. For I heard God's call. But along the way, myself, like Moses, walked away to lead a herd of sheep. And I spent my 20s and most of my 30s thinking I didn't need God. I could do it my way. The way I wanted. Not God's way. My way. And every New Year through Easter Sunday, God would tug at my heart. For almost 20 years, He would tug at my heart. I know from personal experience, just like Moses, when God was telling me, you're going to go back to church. You're going to get involved in the church. You're going to spread my word. You're going to minister to the lost. You're going to get out there and harvest my sheep and make disciples. I kept saying like Moses, no, I won't. No, I won't. For I want to do it my way, not God's way. Resistance is written all over this verse. Resistance is spread all across the land of all nations. The key concept, the first key concept in Lesson 13 today is God does not take no for an answer. In verse 12, God says, Yes, you will. And I'm going to win this argument. When do you want I have told you to do? You will bring back the people to this mountain to worship me here. The ministers of Moses began by going and finding something out about God. He had a personal encounter with him. After he met God, Moses went and got the people who had a need that God could meet. Then he brought those people back to this place where he had a personal experience with God. So that God could touch them as he had been touched. Have you had a personal experience with God? How has God touched you? Moses says in verse 13, What am I supposed to tell these people about you? Do you really think that they will believe that I saw you out here in the wilderness? In a burning bush? God tells Moses the greatest thing about me is that you don't have to explain to me. I am able to reveal myself to the people. I am that I am. I am the self-revealing God. The second key concept is, is God is a self-revealing God. Has God revealed himself to you along your journey on the very earth that God created? Moses still says, I won't go. God says, what is your hand? Moses says, a rod. God says, throw that rod on the ground. Moses did. 
The rod turned into a snake. God told Moses, now pick it back up again. Moses picked it up again, probably with caution, and he turned back into a rod. God said, now take your hand and the stick in your coat. Moses did. God says, pull it out again. Moses did his hand was leprosy. God says, stick your hand back into your coat. Moses did as he was instructed and pulled his hand out again. This time his hand was totally cleansed. Moses said, that's great. Thank you. God, but I'm still not going to Egypt. I can't talk the right way before them. So God said, Okay, I'll send your brother Aaron with you, and he can do the talking for you. But you are going back to Egypt for me. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 8 through 13. In order to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt, God will reveal himself by systematically destroying the false gods of Egypt. On their way to see the Pharaoh, Moses and Aaron walked past all the Egyptian temples and their gods, which were tangled, you, intangible, you could see them, to God and tell the Pharaoh that a god you cannot see had met them out in the wilderness in a burning bush. God's message to the Pharaoh was to let my people go so that they might worship me in the wilderness. Just to show Pharaoh that God meant business, Moses threw down the rod before the Pharaoh and it turned into a snake. Pharaoh said, no big deal. My magicians can do the same thing. So the magicians threw down their rods and they turned into snakes. God, Moses' rod went around and swallowed up all their rods. But that didn't matter to the Pharaoh. His heart was already hardened. In Exodus chapter 7 verse 19 through 22. So God said, all right, if Pharaoh won't listen to you, the river will turn into blood. The Egyptians worshipped the river. They believed life comes from the river. So I will make it turn on them. I want you to take your rod and stretch it forth over the water of Egypt. And the water will turn to blood. When the water was turned to blood, Pharaoh said, That's no big deal. My magicians can do that too. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, hardener. In Exodus chapter 8, verse 2 through 7. So God said, I will smite the land with frogs. Frogs were everywhere. There were frogs in the their frogs in their beds, frogs in their frogs everywhere. Pharaoh said, No big deal. My magicians can do the same thing. And they did. The magicians brought the more frogs onto the land. In cha Exodus chapter 8, verse 16 through 19. So God smote, smite the land with lice. Because the land was a god of Egypt, Egyptians. It threw their crops. God told Moses, you stretch out your, his rod over the land. And suddenly the dust of the land turned against them. And became small biting insects that God on every body and everything. Pharaoh again said, No big deal. My magicians can do the same thing. But the magicians said, We can't do that. This must be the finger of God. And finally, the limit of their powers was reached, and God goes beyond their power. But Pharaoh didn't care. His heart was hardened. From 
in chapter 11 of Exodus, verse 1, God told Moses that there would be one more plague, that the Pharaoh would let them go. And in verse 4 through 6, God said that every firstborn would die from the Pharaoh's house to the servant's house. Even the firstborn among their animals would die. However, God had a plan for the children of Israel to live. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 through 7, God told Moses that this plague and their deliverance from Egypt would mark the new beginning for the people. It will be a new start of a new calendar year. Everybody needs a fresh start from time to time for or a place of new beginning. Have you had a fresh start in your lifetime? Has God given you a fresh start and a new beginning? God told Moses that each household was to select a lamb that was without blemish and they were to take the blood of the lamb and apply it to its two side posts and upper post of their house and in verse 12 and chapter 12 verse 7 through 11 in each household was to eat the entire lamb you have to inner 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 and neutralize the lamb and tells them to eat the lamb in a special way with their shoes on their feet and their staff in their hand and there was to be an exceptional exception that when the blood was applied and the lamb was eaten deliverance would come and in chap in chapter 12 verse 12 through 13 so God went through the land with judgment, taking the life of every firstborn, but he passed every house where he saw the blood of the lamb applied. And he said, the price has already been paid, for there is to be living in this house. And to that night the Pharaoh let them go. And in verse chapter 14 verse 5 through 12 the Israelites have just left Egypt when the Pharaoh changed his mind and went after them with 600 chariots when the Israelites saw the Egyptians they were scared to death the Israelites asked the question didn't you like the circumstances of Egypt the Israelites told Moses, We never really did like your idea to, of leaving Egypt. And in, chap, in verses 13 through 14, when, we, when you don't know what else to do, stand still, pray, and wait for God. Moses could tell the people to see the save, salvation of the Lord because he had been in training for this moment for for the last 80 years in Exodus 15 God told the people to go forward this was impossible there were mountains to the right and to the left chariots were behind them and the Red Sea in front of them how how do you expect to do you go forward in this situation God told Moses to stretch his rod over the sea and the waters parted, leaving dry ground for them to walk across. The pillars of the cloud that was in front of them, the presence of the God had been leading them, suddenly swung around behind them and stood between them and the enemy all night long after the Israel, Israel walked across the dry ground. The Egyptians followed them into the Red Sea in their chariots. And in verse 24 through 25, the Lord looked at the Egyptians and their chariots, and their wheels popped off. And the Bible says the chariots drove heavily in the ground. What a look from the Lord. 
in verse 26 through 31. When the Egyptian chariots were sunk, Moses stretched his rod back over the sea, and the sea drowned the Egyptians. The sea drowned out their past. And in the morning Israel saw the face of their taskmaster dead on their seashore. The very things that used to have been bound were completely destroyed. In review, God revealed himself in the blood of the lamb that was applied and in the lamb that was with anticipation and expectation of deliverance and in the cloud that leads them and protects them and in the water that completely washed the Israelites past. In today's lesson number 13, the two key concepts in the review today is God does not take no for an answer. And the other one is God is a self-revealing God. Until next time, God bless.